Hi everyone and welcome back. Uh, today what we're going to do is start UV mapping the room that we've started with the game level design. Now you should all have this model from the class but if you don't you can go to gettingstartedin3d.com and go to the chapter 5 tutorial which will have that there. That's in your book and you can track that file down as you need to. Now the first thing you'll notice when we open the room we have some different things in here that we haven't had in the past. Uh, we've got the bed, the table, and the windows uh, as long as well as the room. Now I'm going to go ahead and hide these because we really don't need these for this process though in the future you may want to go ahead and practice on these. So what we're going to do is hide all of these windows. Just make sure that we're just focusing on the one room for now. Um, also notice that we have the back face culling on. You'll probably want to turn that off this way you can get a sense of what's going on in the inside and outside. Our polygons here are two-sided so everything that happens on the outside will also happen on the inside and this way you can see everything that's happening. So the first thing we need to do is we need to create a new material and we're going to do that under the hyperchain. We're going to do a quick uh, checker pattern by creating a Lambert and in the attributes here we're going to change this to a checker pattern and then we're going to apply this directly to our room. I'll apply that here, hit 6, and see that it is now showing. Zoom out a little bit and you can see it's right now only doing some of the, the walls. Now that is because our UV mapping is not set up the way we need it to be. So we'll go into our UV mapping here. You can see we have our checker pattern and over the top we have our UVs. Now if we dim the image here you can actually see that it is hiding there. Now if we hide the image you can actually see it even cleaner that currently it creates a, a default box that we can use. But that's not what we want of course because we're going to want to be able to do the doors here and the windows and all the sides. So what we need to do is we're going to first take advantage of Maya's auto mapping. So we're going to go to change this to polygons and we're going to go to create UVs and we're going to use automatic mapping. Now, I don't always suggest using automatic, um, but you know, for the most part, in this case, since we're using a really boxed room, it actually works pretty well. And you can see how we've changed the UVs here. These are our individual UVs created in a way that we can now start working with them and manipulating them. You can see we can have our different doors, our different window panes, the angles here, uh, and the various different walls. So the next thing we're going to do is scale this up. Currently, our image is humongous boxes. So what we're going to want to do is shrink these down so we can get a better sense of size and scale. So we're just going to scale these up um, within the editor itself by changing this to UV mode, selecting them all, and then, oops, sorry, and then scaling these up and you'll notice as I drag these up we're getting smaller boxes in the actual viewport itself. Now this doesn't have to be exact to start with for now we're just kind of looking for a general line a general edge something that we could work in because we'll actually be scaling this back down in a little while. As you can see as we rotate around we actually have a pretty decent shape while not perfect it will do for what we need to do but you'll notice as we turn around the boxes, while they're aligned here well and aligned on the bottom really well, on the sides are rather stretched out. Now that's because we're working at an angle and this is flat. So we need to tweak this and to do that we're going to switch back and we're going to do this in planar mode. So I'm going to change this, I'm going to move back to face, I'm going to select the different faces that we're going to use here to create this UV map. So we're going to select this and you can see that it is over here as well. And we're going to go to create UVs, planar mapping, and options. We're going to make sure that we use the best plane here, um, which in our case is going to be the plane that we are currently looking at. And then we could use the key image height uh, ratio here and then click box. And you notice how it is much larger than it was, 
but we can easily change that the same way just by selecting in the corner here and scaling this up. Now we'll actually tweak this again more later uh, when we do our revision. So right now the size really doesn't matter that much. But you can go ahead and do that for all three sides. And you can just do the same planar mapping. It'll use the same uh, settings that you used previously. And they don't have to be exact. You can just get it close to what it was before. And on this one, we're going to choose the face, bring it here, 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 here. And then we are going to do the planar mapping again. We have them here. We're going to scale them up. This one turns out a little odd. So but that's okay. We're going to end up changing this. So our next step, now that we have all of these set up, you can see how our UVs are all mapped into a bit of a mess. So what we're going to want to do is move these out of the way so we can separate them out. To do that, we can easily grab the corners and our edges here and just move windows. So we're going to scale in here and we're going to switch to UV mode. By switching to UV mode, we can select a corner here. We can control click and do to shell. Now what that'll do is that'll choose everything that is within that UV. So you can see here we have our different green points selected within the window. So we can then scroll out take our move and drag our whole window up and get it out of the way. Now we can do the same thing with these other ones. So we can go switch back to UV mode, select a corner here, control click to shell and drag it up and out of the way so that we can sew these together later and so that we can work with them a little better. Oops. And drag that one over there and then the same thing for here control click to shell up and over now you notice our windows are a lot of different sizes but that's okay because again we're going to tweak that and change that i like to keep these in order when i'm working with them so that later on when i'm sewing them together that they make sense okay so our next step is going to be to sew these together because right now all of our different sides are going in different directions. So to sew these together, we're gonna have to think about how these connect to each other, okay? So if I choose one corner here, okay, you can see that this corner is attached down here, okay? This is not what we would think when we think that it is connected to this corner. Notice how this corner here is actually this corner here. So you gotta remember we're thinking in multiple directions here and we're thinking in multiple planes. So we need to move and sew these together, but we're also gonna need to adjust and change how they work, okay? So by checking our corners, we can actually see that this is now that corner. So this is basically flipped. So if we take this, we can use our rotate tool we can actually select our corners here and notice now that our UVs are lined up where we would like them to be. Our corners are down at the bottom and then we can do the same thing here. So we can look at this corner here. By looking at the one corner, notice that it is this corner here is lined up down here. So our UV on this one is all sorts of backwards. So we can actually rotate this to the point where it is correct. So now we have this corner equals this corner here, which is also the same as this corner. We could then take these edges and start sewing them together, but before I do that, I'd like to make sure that my other one is right. I'm gonna come over here and see how that this and this are backwards. I can take these and flip them. And now that top corner is the same as this top corner. So our next step is to sew these together. So what I'm gonna like to do is I'm gonna switch to edge mode and I'm gonna switch these edges and you can actually see how they are connected. These are actually connected in 3D space along this edge here. And then say I chose this edge here, you can see how it goes between the two. So what we can do is we can actually just select that single edge, go to polygons, move and sew edges and that will attach these together. We can do the same thing here, polygons, move and sew edges. 
And there we have it. Now our edges are all connected. If I click, collect all of these and try to move them, I can actually move the individuals and these will stay together in one group. You can see that happening over on the side. Now while those are all sorts of bent and warped, we can very simply take these polygons and then align. We can align these same way. Same thing here. And same thing at the bottom here. And that's a nice easy way to make sure that all of our squares are perfectly lined up. They're a little warped right now, but we'll still we've still got a lot of tweaking to do, and we will get those edges a little bit better as we go. Because you can see they're right here. Those are still off. Didn't get those lined up. See, now we're there we go. So now we're lined up pretty well. It's not fantastic, but it's a start. You can see how our edge here is a little short of where we'd like it to be, and these this one's a little wider than the other ones. We can actually now move these and uh, tweak the settings as we feel we need to. But for now, like I said, we're at a good point. We need to go ahead and move our walls, which are on the sides here. We have this and this connected. So that's our next step. So we need to find our edge here. And you can actually see how it's taking this edge down here. So put polygons, move and sew edges. You can see that that didn't line up the way we had hoped. So we'll undo. And then we'll take a look at just the UVs. We'll see where that is. So that is in this top corner here, which is the same one there. So this corner and this corner need to be the same. So we can actually rotate this and see what we need to do. So we might want to rotate this like this once and then flip it and see if that, yeah, that lines us up here and with this upper corner. We can now take this edge, if I change it to edge mode, take this edge here and polygons, move in so UV edges, and we're good to go there. Do the same thing on this side. We'll probably have to rotate these around here. Switch this to UV mode, select this here. And let's take a look. We'll select that UV, come over to this side and see how it is the upper corner there, but I'm willing to bet, yeah, that one is not the same. See how that one's at that corner there? So what we actually need to do is again, rotate these, uh, probably thinking, just guessing at this right now, that there, that's that bottom corner. And this is the upper corner, right? So we can take this and flip it one more time. And now this corner should be the same as that corner, which is great. We move to edge mode, select our edge, polygons, move and sew edges. And now we have these all together where if we switch to UV mode, you can actually see how as we're dragging these along, they line up all the way around. And of course our next step is going to be to want to, again, align these. I did this once before. Normally I don't do this till the very end but I thought it'd make a good time to demonstrate to see how we can align these here. And there you go. And now we have a nicely aligned boxes. We have a little bit of warping going on here, but that's nothing too major at the moment. That's something we can adjust uh, later on. It comes down to the size of these windows. are far larger on some of them than they are on the other ones. Our next goal is to convert these in some way that we can actually fit these all into this one pattern, keep them a, a typical size so that our scaling that we've been working so hard at stays the same. So what we're going to do is we're going to highlight over all of these and we're going to scale these down. And we're going to try to get these as close as possible to fitting within our box. Now you can see already we've got problems that this one is inverted. This is our door into the room. So we can just flip this back over. 
and this being our floor and our ceiling, we're going to want to get these facing in a direction that we can get them snug in here a little bit better, and I'll show you why that is here in a moment. We're going to line up these here. We're going to line up this here. This is appears to be that other top of the window. So move that there. We'll take all of these, slide these over. We'll squeeze these in at the end. And this, even though this isn't really where this goes, it's still okay that we can kind of fit that in. Now again, we're gonna select all of these, scale them down, and try to get them within here. Now we could take and just move these in here one by one and leave some extra space, but the goal is really not to leave any extra space if we could at all help it. So what we can do here is we can actually cut these edges and move some of these. So I'm going to switch to edge mode and I'm going to select this edge here. Now we have this attached to these windows here, but we can attach it to the other side of the room. That's that edge. We can actually attach it on the other side. So what we're going to do is go to polygons and we're going to cut the UV edge. Now what that's going to allow us to do is move this to the other side. So if we select this edge here, right, we can actually see how that's lined up there. We can select this edge here. It lines up with that one. We can actually move and sew these edges. And of course we have that same problem we had before where it's not exactly lining up where we would like it to. So again, let's select the, we're gonna undo. We're gonna move this back there. We're gonna move this over here. I actually like to turn the image off here so we can actually get a nice view of what we're looking at. Take our edge, actually change this to the UV mode so now that we know that this is separated, we can again control to the shell, move this away from what we had. And now we can look at our corner. So our corner is there and that corner should be the same. So this corner and that corner. So all we need to do is take this and flip it. So now this corner and oop, this corner are the same. We can select the edge and move and sew. And there we go. And this will allow us to smoosh in a little more of this. Oop, we move these down. Actually select these. UV mode. We'll just move these down here. We can fit this in nice and tight. And then take these. this and this end here is just to give you an idea of where I ended up um, I did a quick align of a lot of these they're not again not perfect um, but quick for this tutorial showed you how I filled up this entire block here this entire goal is to fill this block here which will then export and be able to use in Photoshop so this will show you here I'll just I'll close that out so you can actually see this is exactly what we're looking for. I even left a little extra room here in case I wanted to put a sign on the door that said exit or warning or something of that nature. Okay, thank you.